Hi there, this is Fanuel Mwindi, and this is your Civic Side TV Network Briefing. So in Malden, we've been talking with artists participating in the city's art exhibit titled Our Warming Planet, Visions of a Sustainable Future. The exhibit opened on March 7th, and the mayor of Malden told us this. So you said earlier that the artwork is inspiring you guys. Tell us, how has it inspired you so far? Well, I've always felt since being mayor that everything comes from within. And that's exactly how it's happened here when it comes to climate action. Honestly, it was not on our radar 10 years ago, but thanks to everyone here tonight and out in the community, now it is. Catch the rest of that interview on Civic Side TV. In other network news, Claire O'Neill, founder of Earthwise Aware, a space in Massachusetts, told Civic Side TV Emma Subisky that her organization is fostering conversations between scientists and naturalists. O'Neill notes that Earthwise Aware is not just about collecting data, it's about fostering an ecological culture. She goes on to state, and I quote, we believe that meaningful conversations begin with a deeper understanding of our surroundings and our role in them, end quote. On Civic Side TV Radio, Atlanta science communicator Zakia Watley, host of Dope Labs and, and The Breakthrough, discusses the power of understanding your audience. Dr. Watley shares her audience first approach to making complex scientific concepts accessible without sacrificing accuracy. Have a listen. I think sometimes when I consider audience, one of my favorite things to tell people is if I'm in the South, I'm saying toboggan. If I am in the North, I'm saying beanie. Okay, and that's for a hat. And I just think there are small things that tell people to, that signal like this person is a part of my group or this person maybe understands my experience and they are speaking to me. And so a lot of that that looks different. I think when I first started Dope Labs, I was just moving out of a tenure track position and into managing a PhD program where I'm using a lot of academic lingo and I'm talking about molecular biology all the time. And I want to turn that teacher voice or that professor voice off. And on Dope Labs, I want it to feel casual. I want people to feel like they're sitting on the couch with me talking to my friend because that's actually what we were doing when we were recording. Catch the rest of that interview on Civic Side TV. And on Civic Side TV Africa, Amanda Obedike of STEMI Makers Africa and Justin Yarrow of Super Scientist talk with host Stephanie Okeo about the joint collaboration that resulted in the launch of SciComm in Practice Fellowship. They mentioned in the conversation that the overwhelming response to the fellowship, over 400 applications, showed a huge demand for structured science communication training. Have a listen. From the beginning to the application, we had overwhelming number of people that were very, very enthusiastic and were very willing to uh, being part of the fellowship. So uh, in short, is the the psychom in practice, you know, came the, the, the name came in and we tried to see how we could just pen it as a signature name, you know, and um, uh, it was a very, very good experience. It's something that we started in the month of uh, between uh, September, August, September, and we rounded off. So um, we had uh, uh, fellows that we categorized as core fellows and associate fellows. Uh, fellows were like the young ones that didn't really have so much work doing in the uh, psych science communication space. While we had associate fellows that we found out that they, you know, they had uh, quite a lot of amazing work or they had their own existing initiatives. And so, on my own program, Questions of the Day, I talked with Aubrey Strait Krug, the director of the Perennial Cultures Lab at the Land Institute, who told me that the civic scientist dedication they have been witnessing through the Perennial Atlas project, which involves local communities, is especially inspiring, even when the results aren't as expected. Take a listen. An interesting aspect of the this agricultural hands-on civic science work is that because we're studying perennials, we're looking at plants that live for multiple years. That's the benefit of what we're trying to do here. But that means that it's really valuable for our civic scientists to participate for multiple growing seasons. So it's a big ask for people to join a project, not just one time to collect data and send it in and that's that, but to monitor and 
steward and care for a research plot for several years in a row. And this week, the organization inspiring us is Trend in Africa, a charity supporting scientific capacity building across Africa. The community engagement program run by African scientists has engaged thousands of members of public. Do check them out. And that's your Civics ITV Network briefing for this week. Explore those insights and many others by visiting our terminal on civicsitv.org. See you next time. Why do stakeholders choose the Civics ITV Network? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, great question. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a great question. Civics ITV. Top experts, great questions, new insights. Subscribe to the Civic Side TV network on YouTube and don't miss new insights from diverse stakeholders. <laughs>